Welcome back. Let's random a handsome man out. Let's set up a camera and talk a little bit about lighting and render settings and how to preview this before you get out of final render. So technically we can go and render this perspective viewport out here. We can also switch this to something else. So if we wanted to look directly from the front, we can do that. This is good for lining things up from the front or from the right or from the top. You can make all that happen. You can have multiple viewports if you wanted to do that. But we've been using the perspective view up until now. And this is a good one to wander around your scene in and make adjustments, especially when it comes to bringing other items together and making sure they work together well in your scene. If you wanted to know what this would look like if we'd render this out, you switch your viewport over to NVIDIA iRay. That is our high quality render engine that takes a while to get it right, but it looks quite phenomenal and very, very photorealistic, extremely handsome. It relies on a few other factors, uh, the speed of which depends on the speed of your graphics card mainly, but it also depends on what we've set up on the render settings tab. That's this one over here. Uh, my computer is currently working on it. So while it's doing that, it usually shows you something in white and then eventually it switches over to something like this. So while you have your perspective view switched over to NVIDIA iRay, you can still control the viewport, but it'll take your computer a little bit of time to catch up with what you're doing. So you can see all this grain here. My computer is trying its best. It can't quite do it in complete real time and the grain will gradually go away as the viewport is standing still. So you'll notice that this looks very different from our preview image, but you also notice that this might not be what you want your final render to look like. So especially in regards to lighting, I think we can do a lot of improvements here. We do see light, by the way, in the viewport because we have something called the default HDR image in there. So that's global illumination. This is a technique in which a kind of a sky dome, relatively large, is on the outside of your scene, on the inside of which is an image that's projected and the bright parts of the image are shining into the center of the scene. And that is what's creating the light. And this gets us both reflections as well as very soft and realistic light. So we see that we seem to have one light source in the scene, which uh, extends his soft shadow over to this side, but that might not be what I want. So perhaps I want my sky dome or my light source effectively to be coming from slightly from the front here, and I want things to be a little bit brighter. So we can adjust all that on the render settings tab here. If you head over to environment over here, then it's a bit like with the content. You can open these things up and then whittle things down into smaller subsections here. So under dome, we can see that the environment map, that's the image that's currently creating this light. If you hover over that, you can see the image. You have a kind of a bright spot in the middle. It's very low res, but for lighting, it's perfectly fine. If you do have your own HDRIs, and if you know what that is, you can go and load them in here just by clicking on this and then heading to browse, and you can bring in your own HDRIs. Very cool, from places like Polyhaven or from products that you buy from the desk store. This is also where we can change the intensity of our HDRI. So the default is two, but if I put maybe five, you can either left click and drag the slider or just type in a number. There we go. We can see my HDRI is now shining a lot brighter. Now, the position of the HDRI is governed by the dome Y rotation. That's over here. The dome is the sky dome that I talked about and Y is up in Das Studio. And if we move that around, then we change the position where the light is coming from. So let me go and left click and drag on the slider here and see what happens. As this is all being calculated by iRay, it might take a little bit of time to catch up, but this is perhaps where I'd like my light to come from. So my guy looks a little bit brighter. There's still a lot of other stuff that we can improve here. He could have a backlight. He might now be a little bit too bright. So maybe five changes back into three or maybe four. I could also add additional light objects from here under the create menu, but we're talking about that in different videos. So just for now, let's say this is the kind of lighting I'm happy with and I'm ready to render out my final picture. So the render settings tab is full of really important functionality. The first one can be found on the general tab. This is where we set the global dimensions of our picture. I've currently got one that looks like it's a square. And that was that little white outline I've disabled in the beginning on this little hamburger icon here. If you enable show aspect frame, this draws your white outline around the part that's going to arrive on your final render. So in my case, it's a square. But if we wanted to change that, the dimensions has a lot of presets that make 
that very easy. So maybe like uh, Ultra HD, that's a 4K landscape image. I could render that out. Or I could go and use a portrait image, like golden ratio portrait, for example. There we go. Then that changes what's going to arrive on my final picture. The proportions are constrained here, but you can disable that and literally type in any dimension that you need. So maybe I want mine to be 1300 by 2000 as an example. And if I do that, then the aspect ratio changes itself to 13 by 20. And that, that, is, that is handsome. Now, still, we're looking at the perspective view here. And if I move that, then my framing will change as a result of that. I might want to render my guy out from different angles. And I also might want to save my scene and bring this back. And the perspective view isn't going to save into a scene file. So for that, we need to create a camera. And it's really easy to do. It's up here on the create menu at the very top new camera if we do that another dialog pops up and in it we can either use the default settings which is camera looking at the center of the scene or we can go and copy the active view in my case that is the perspective view that's what we want if i do that then i create a new object in my scene tab that i can now switch to up here so now i have my camera I could have also named that. I didn't do that. But, you know, if I do that, then we see no difference. But the good thing is that now my position of this shot is locked in. So if I go back into my perspective view and change something, I now have a different view that I can change to, namely the camera that is still locked in with what I wanted to do. So you need to do that before you save your scene so that you can bring it back and make further adjustments. Otherwise, your framing is going to be discarded. Now it's basically a matter of just hitting that big blue render button on the render settings tab and that will start rendering out the picture. And here he is. That's Themo as he lives and breathes. That's the render we've made. And that is your homework, ladies and gentlemen. Practice doing this. Practice this with all types of content and do this many, many times. These little squares in the background means that this is a transparent background. You can now go and take this picture into Photoshop and add a different background to it. You can also add other items into the background. You can use the environments tab to have your own background in the scene. And that's just so much more that you can do with Das Studio, much more than I have time for in here. But there's good news. We do have two things I wanted to let you know about. There's a product called the Basics and Beyond Tutorial Bundle. This comes with a handsome selection of products, namely Victoria 8.1, two outfits, some expressions, a great outdoor scene, and also a wonderful outfit here. And I've recorded Call it a one hour tutorial series that you can watch directly on this shop page. I'm going to link to that in the description. It has six parts and it explains a little bit more what you can do with that studio and camera setup and rendering. And this is something that I would recommend you watch as the next step. If you're serious about creating really, really good pictures with that studio, check out the Das Studio Masterclass that is up here on the on das3d.com on our website over here under community there's the masterclass if you click that there's a 16 hour course that i've recorded split into three parts and that goes into way more detail than i have time for here so we'll recap everything that i've explained here in much more detail there's in part two you get to find out about our real-time cloth draping engine and how to change clothing that doesn't quite fit the characters if you're in that situation and part three goes into post-production more render settings and everything that you need to create handsome looking images with Das Studio. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know how you like this new format, the interactive tutorial. And if you'd like to see more of them, we're happy to oblige. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Have fun with Das Studio.